Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante. Let's look at Gaumon M106K one week later. So this is mostly an additional video to the first episode where we unboxed and checked out the tablet for the first time. And now I'll answer some of the comments that you guys asked under the first video. And also I'll tell you about some of the issues that I ran into after I recorded the first episode and what happened next. So first of all, the question about the buttons being at the left and what do you do if you're a lefty? Well, in the driver, there is a setting for in the work area. You can just flip it 180 degrees and then rotate the tablet like this. And now, oh God, I don't know why I'm showing you this. You know what lefty means. But yeah, it works pretty great. The only thing is you'll have the soft keys upside down, but they're gonna be at the bottom, which I think is kind of more comfortable. <laughs> So let me get it back. So that's the thing for the lefties, and that, by the way, explains why the cord is exactly in the middle. So the whole design of this tablet is absolutely symmetrical, except for the soft keys. So whenever you rotate it, a lefty would have the same experience with the form factor as the right-handed person. Another thing that I, I think I forgot to show in the first video and someone asked in the comments, importing and exporting config files is present right here in the last tab. So you can do that a lot. And that was also the answer from the guys from Gaumann about the inability of the software to have different preferences for different programs. One for Photoshop, another for Paintstorm Studio or whatever. So yeah, you basically work around it by importing and exporting the files, which is of course not a big deal if you're on a budget and you're just basically using one program, or maybe you work with two or something, then you can just go ahead and import or export the hotkeys. But if you're a professional artist and you use a lot of software, especially if you're a 3D artist, because I know from my own experience, if you're a 3D artist, you have to work with a lot of software at the same time. For instance, like Maya and Photoshop, Photoshop, Maya and ZBrush, ZBrush and Photoshop, ZBrush and Mari, Maya and Mari and ZBrush and Photoshop, it's all together, not to mention UV mapping software. There is a lot of stuff to work with and you really need a lot of uh, configurations to replace itself whenever you just switch between the programs. So that will work that way. But if you're just an artist that just works in one program, that's not a big issue at all. Also, someone asked about the support and how Gaumon actually responds to people. I had an issue of... Um, there was a little bug in the software where whenever you change something and then you press apply, it won't save the setting. The only way to make it work before was to only click OK. So apply button kind of reset the settings to what it was before you changed it. And I wrote about it to Gaumann guys and uh, within this week they already updated the driver and now the issue is gone. So here we have apply button, oh my god actually changing settings right away, so everything is working sharp. Oh, uh, another thing, I'm not sure if they also included this in the update, but I think that little glitch with the angle when you quickly twist the pen, the little angle glitch, I think it's gone now. Let me check it out in the same brush that I used before. Oh no, it's there, <laughs> never mind. Maybe it's in this brush though. What, maybe it's like a program issue, because I think I tried it on a different... No, it's still here. Oh, I think it wasn't here when I wasn't recording, so maybe it has something to do with that. Yeah, because this is actually... This is the Painstorm Studio limitation, by the way. Like, if I do really quickly, you can see these kind of like slightly rounded angles. And that's actually what Paintstorm Studio does. That's one of the things, one of the issues of the program. And it's probably where it really showed up when I was doing a quick twist, of course. It had nothing to do with the 
driver, I believe. So driver is perfectly fine because when I wasn't recording, my computer had full performance dedicated to Paintstorm Studio and I had no problems with the angle. Also, someone asked to make a test of slowly painting like a straight line as much as I'll be able to do that. So really slowly. And I know what that is about, especially when I'm wiggling like this. So this is, I don't know, this was the wiggle of my actual hand like this. Here, I'm working really slowly. I'll go horizontally as well. It's about the resolution of the sensor panel of actual tablet itself. So if we get, oh, you see, there are a little bit of the steps like this. But I remember on Wacom 3, they actually were quite bigger. Or maybe it's Paintstorm Studio that is smoothing it out a bit. But there you have it. That's the quality of the stroke with this. Actually, a really good test. I never actually thought about it. Thank you guys for telling me about it. It's really good. So yeah, a little bit of pixelated steps like this. On the latest generation of top models of uh, tablets, this issue is gone because there is a very high resolution of the sensor, it won't have the step like this. Another issue I want to mention, if you can call it an issue, because it's like literally every tablet has it, you can only use this tablet alone in the system. Meaning, you see this at the bottom, I have these empty thumbnails. That's because I uninstalled Wacom driver. And that is because it will stop working properly when I'll connect my companion too, it won't work properly, like I won't have the pressure sensitivity and tilt sensitivity, because any two drivers of tablets always fight for the WinTab framework, so they won't work together. Right now, I have Gaumann tablet installed last, so I have the proper pressure sensitivity on this tablet, and Wacom won't have it. If I'll install Wacom on top, Gaumann will lose the pressure sensitivity. And I know what happens with any two tablets ever, because even two different generations of Wacom also have this problem. You ever notice that I never actually use my Wacom 3, the huge non-screen tablet that I showed you some time ago? That's because I can't, I have to reinstall drivers to actually use them. Whenever I use my Intuos 3, I have to reinstall Companion 2 afterwards and so on and so forth. So there's that, not really an issue, but that is why I don't have my Wacom tablet connected at the moment. It won't really work. Oh yeah, also one more issue has to do with the screens with the resolution higher than 2K. You may have a problem where the mapping will be wrong, like I will be painting here, like my cursor will be here, but the actual painting will be here. And if I'll be painting lower, it will be even lower than that, like the distance gets bigger. And the Gaumann support told me that to avoid it, the only thing you can do is to change the settings in your display, like this you go in the settings, and in here usually high dense displays with the pixels very close to each other, they have the this scale and layout at 150 or 125 percent to actually make all the text bigger. So that is causing the issue, you have to change it to 100 on the big screen, that way it will work properly. And of course, if you just have a big display that doesn't have the dense pixels, but just a big size, you will have the 100% scale anyway of the system. So yeah, that won't be an issue. Aside from that, I had no issues with anything at all. Oh, one little thing I wanted to mention, I didn't specify it enough in the previous video, is that whenever you're using the full area of the tablet, you're actually at 16 by 10 proportions of uh, the tablet. Like, when you're not using the soft keys, it's actually becoming 16 by 10. And if you want to use the soft keys, it will crop your workspace to the original initial 16 by 9, like HD proportions. So if you have a screen of 1920 by 1080, the full HD resolution, you will have just the right proportions of this workspace with the soft keys activated. So in my case, I have this screen right here is 1680 by 1050, and that is 16 by 10 proportions. 
So when I'm using the screen ratio, you see it's working on top of the soft keys. And if I would be working on the more of a modern screen or probably any kind of laptop screen, it's almost guaranteed to have HD proportions, 16 by 9, so you will have the free space for your soft keys on the tablet as well. So yeah, there's that. I think I have nothing else to tell you. We discovered a little issue with uh, drawing if you're into very precise line art. I don't know, it looks really nice anyway. I don't know how slowly I should do the line. Like, well, here, like, it's actually not a pixel step. It's kind of like a smooth step as well. But anyway, like, you just look at what it looks like and you think for yourself if it's uh, good enough or not. So yeah, this is it. Basically, some of the issues having to do with the big screens and the only way to work with different settings for different programs is exporting the configuration file. Generally, like, I don't know, four plus out of five performance with the strokes, I guess we can say, since I think we can see some of the pixelated steps with the precise line. And aside from that, it's a very well done budget kind of tablet. I still think this is the case. So this is my opinion on the M106 K. I said $50 on sale. I saw it on Amazon without any sale for right under $70. Many of you guys said this is crazily cheap, so there's that. And the tablet is actually not just some cat in a bag. Seems to be working just fine. So yeah, I think I mentioned everything I wanted to. And I thank you for watching if you did, I guess it did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend, paint something cool today, do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one, bye! Okay, I have to go. <laughs>